so my my front wheel bearings were like mm -hmm. so bad that I couldn't even drive it. It was just shaking and coating out. Like I was getting uh, traction control codes so bad. Like it was mm -hmm. locking up the brake while I was trying to accelerate oh God. the highway. That's fun. It was, yeah, it was like applying brake pressure to all four wheels and just, it was chaos. So I actually left work early um, that that afternoon. I left work at like noon and I was like, killer, man. I'm going to go home. I'm just going to knock this out and it'll be <laughs> fun. It's not some project that's going to be looming over me. Right. And then it like, uh, I don't know, you sent me a text um, and I was like, <laughs> Fuck, you got to be kidding me. Like, no. <laughs> well, I've already rescheduled on these guys. I, I felt bad. So no, it was all good. It's got to do what you got to do. There's a lot. So, Ross, where, where do you uh, hail from? <laughs> Connecticut. Funny Connecticut. you say hail because he just had terrible storms. <laughs> oh yeah, we got we got good and fucked up by those storms. There's some. They're like a bunch of the states still doesn't have power. Yeah. Um, so my, I actually was born in in Ware, Mass. Okay. My dad's from Hartford, and okay. I grew up in Berry, Mass. Mm -hmm. uh, just outside of Worcester. Yep. Um, oh fucking Worcester. Yeah. <laughs> the worst, <laughs> the so, worst. Uh, yeah hartford's fun though hartford's where i run autocross that's a good city oh really yeah nice yeah i've, I've been in missouri since 97 so i'm oh, really wow. more native to missouri but yeah <laughs> you guys got a lot more fun stuff to do down there at least for outdoor stuff yeah yeah I, you can get up north and find some really beautiful stuff or kind of get into the uh yeah, get west a little bit into the Appalachians or mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. Down, yep. The Smokies and see some cool stuff. But I don't know, Kansas City's just kind of. We're three hours from anything cool, Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> just three? Yeah, like I, the, if I want to go to see something cool outdoorsy, it's three hour minimum drive. Yeah, at least. Yeah. <laughs> and then after that, mm -hmm. it's like, all right, maybe six for something really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Colorado's a solid eight. Oh yeah, uh, I actually still I've only done the Colorado drive a couple times to get out there, but it's it's eight to Denver. It, it, yeah, yeah, it's an hour if you want to get into the mountains. Yes, <laughs> it's yeah. fun. the really fun stuff like Estes is a solid nine. Um, yeah, it's like nine and a half, but that's because I have spent way too much time out there and I know the back ways that I can ignore the <laughs> other. You can tourists. take shortcuts. Yeah. Or at least maintain my momentum at five over the speed limit while the other tourists are doing like 45 on the wrong road. Um, yeah, going the wrong way. Yeah. Big my, my way is like eight eight miles longer, but because I can taint or maintain the constant speed, it's mm -hmm. like 10 minutes faster. But for whatever reason, Google never tells anybody else to go that way. Yeah. I listened to the uh, the podcast you guys did with Ryan from Quiet Cat. He's a good mm -hmm. I I talked to him. I can't remember six or eight months ago about more expo uh okay uh, for whatever reason it didn't work out but we'll see we'll see him out at the show one of these years yeah definitely seems like they're on their way up oh yeah those things are so sweet right yeah um i gotta That's... ride an electric an e-bike <laughs> down at the artemis shop you know, a couple weeks ago it's so much fun and mm -hmm. Art artemis is in springfield right yep yeah, I, have an, I have an uncle in Springfield. I feel like I need to have an excuse to go visit them. and That's your excuse. See Artemis. Really, yeah. I just want to see Artemis. I don't... Sorry, Uncle Mike. Uh, <laughs> really need to see him. <laughs> yeah, you can go down there and check that out. And there's also um, uh, Chad with Overland Addict. He's got an uh, overlanding store down there, too. Does he? Okay. Is that, the only one I know about in town with us is Adventure Motors. Adventure Motors, um, the Overland Essentials. Oh, that's right. Those guys are here too. Yeah, they're they're kind of out west a little bit. I think they're in 
Lawrence, something like that. But yeah, they're they're local. They're good dudes. Leavenworth. Leavenworth. That's it. Yep. You looked it up, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so back it up. I did not just jump to Leavenworth in my own mind. <laughs> <laughs> just pull that out of the back of your head. <laughs> so so the Jeep is functional once again. So the Jeep's the Jeep is functional. It's funny while I was talking about it laying down, I mean my computer dies. <laughs> <laughs> so uh we'll, we'll edit it so no one will know. Seriously. Yeah. So are they, are they the terrible press bearings or are they the just pop out, pop in ones? Uh so the the first time that you ever have to pull them out. They're terrible. It's a unit bearing style. Uh, the first time you pull it out, it's it's murder, especially if you've been like through some water crossings and in mud at all. Yeah, like uh, seized in there. Yeah, you really need a puller. But I pulled them out like a year ago when I my axle shafts, and I I'm very conscious about putting anti-seize on stuff that mm-hmm. that's like underneath the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could back out. Yeah. <laughs> So they, they actually just, they kind of popped right out. So it was really nice. nice. Well, that's I positive. I, I think I did the whole job in like four hours and I spent, you know, 45 minutes on the phone with somebody else while I was doing it. Mm. <laughs> Multitasking. I myself to get it done. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so what's, uh, what's the layout for the uh, podcast? So we basically roll into it pretty quick. This is it. Uh, this is, this <laughs> is the show. <laughs> uh, I do need to do the one open line that I have. Uh, and then we'll just kind of, we'll briefly talk about one trailer that we got introduced to that I'd never seen before. Uh, and then I'll, I've got an update. Ross has got an update. And then we'll talk about you for most of it. Oh, cool. That sounds like fun. Uh, well, well, as they say in show business, let's get it started. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. Oh, and I'm Chris Holloway. <laughs> Hi, Chris. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's all right. The best part of this is I can either edit that out or leave it in. We'll never know. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> we, we will actually know when the show goes live. Uh, um, as always, we've been social distancing before it was mandated, but that's more about the fact that none, none of us are in the exact location, but tonight is definitely the closest the three of us have ever been. Cheers, man. I'm in Kansas City, Ross is in Connecticut, and Chris is also in Kansas City. We're just on either side of the state line from each other. Yep, Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, and I'm not in Kansas City, Kansas, but nobody knows that it's actually two different states. Yes. It's a big city. Which there, have you guys, uh, I'm sure it's a terrible movie. It cracks me up though. Seth MacFarlane did A Million Ways to Die in the West. The best. Oh my God. So bad it's good. And there's a throwaway joke about Kansas City in that movie. Because Charlize, Charlize Theron says, oh, we're from Kansas City. And Seth MacFarlane goes, oh yeah, Kansas. And she goes, nope, Missouri. Like, wow. It's from two different states. Like, it's, for a multi-million dollar big budget movie, Kansas City jokes getting wedged in there. It's pretty good. It's a pretty it. entertaining movie. Which is also, uh, I think the Chiefs played in Atlanta preseason either last year or the year before. Mm-hmm. And the Falcons stadium staff were doing like fun jokes as the Chiefs took the field and said, you're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah. And they're, they're never in Kansas. They right. play in Missouri. <laughs> yeah, never. They all probably live in Kansas. Uh, I think it gets split <laughs> quite a bit. Lee Summit gets a lot of action from those guys, I think. Oh, really? That that in the plaza. Because it's it's easier to get to the stadium from over there. Like, Yeah. They don't have to go through the triangle. Oh, The Bermuda Triangle? Uh, Pretty much. It's, the, it's called the Grandview <laughs> Triangle, but local okay. folks get you local work. Uh, <laughs> and now to rewatch A Million Ways to Die in the West this weekend. Oh, yeah. so good. Anyway, the thing that we want to talk about that was new to us, we'd never seen before. Chris, I, I, do you still have the link to the show notes? Did I send that to you? Uh, yeah, I can dig it up. Well, just Google uh, Taxa, T-A-X-A, Mantis. I, we, had, we had Taxa at the February Expo. Did you? Yeah, they're awesome. 
I have look never at heard of this until right before uh, we were setting this up with you the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, our editor at Hooniverse, Jeff, was like, I sent him a trailer that I was looking at, and he's like, oh, this is the one that I want. And I'd never seen Taxa before. Yeah, uh, the Mantis, I think it's like the Crickets. The other one is the small one. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> they've got another one, too. I think they have three. But there's there's actually a dealer for them here in Kansas City off of uh, uh, 71 in Grandview. Really? You didn't need to know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I needed to know that. I Chris's Chris's wallet just jumped off a bridge. <laughs> Will they let me borrow one? <laughs> They're actually reasonably priced. I think that uh, I think that the the smaller one starts at like sixteen or seventeen thousand, which sounds really high, but it's incredibly low for off mm -hmm. off roadish trailer. Right. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm gonna describe with words what is the mantis. It looks like a rectangle on wheels that is not tall at all um or the lady in their um photography is a giant um, possibly both <laughs> possibly both but it's it's very different <laughs> shaped from like a traditional teardrop or some of the off-road trailers and it has a pop-up on the top so like someone tall like me could stand in it mm -hmm. but what i was impressed with the most dry weight's only 2800 pounds yeah, they're super light. It seems like the spot where Airstream, pop-up, and off-road trailer meet. Like if there was a three-way Venn diagram, this is like the little bubble overlap. We talked about this with someone before, didn't we? Or did I just share this with you? I think you and I might have just talked about okay, it. Because they, they have a, a, a JKU pulling one. And the squat on the rear. Oh, it's not happy. I remember you talking. Somebody was talking about this. Yeah, it's not a happy vehicle in that picture. <laughs> but I really, I really, I need to go see one. I So, Chris, my, my dad and I were supposed to go to Iceland here the end of October, and we've kind of backtracked that with, you know, global pandemic. Well, global pandemic. What's that? Pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, pan means everywhere. Like, you don't have to say global dumbass uh, but we're now thinking about going out to the north rim of the grand canyon yeah and so he doesn't really want to tent camp uh so i'm trying to find other modes of transportation i don't think i'll be able to snag one of these before then because it seems like every rv type company right now has lead times that take you into like february oh my goodness yeah <laughs> uh, good luck that so that same dealer also sells um uh it's check out um offroadrv.com they sell the sniper trailers offroadrv.com yeah. please like hold sweet url seriously they're so cool yeah. and those things are like they're wicked tough built uh, i feel like every time i I, I look up anything with with overlanding. I find seventeen more companies that I never knew about. Seriously. Oh, these oh. look fucking awesome. There's also a JKU, also a silver <laughs> Wrangler Limited in the lead photo. And it does still have a little squat to the back. <laughs> yeah. Our our payload on those things is only a thousand pounds. Really? Oh my god. Yeah, like on JKUs. Yeah, so if you've got a cool in the back and then 700 pounds of tongue weight, you're you're about done. Yeah, you're overloaded. <laughs> That's mine's, it. Mine's like in the minus. I think I'm probably payload minus like 2,000 pounds. <laughs> oh. But, uh, Dude, yeah, those, those, are, those are intense. The snipers are really nice too. So the sniper, man, I'm going to have to borrow some of their photography or drop in some Instagram posts or something. To mm. For, for the listener, it's more of a, a shorter rectangle, but still with the pop-up, and it still has, is it, it's almost like a a traditional pop-up trailer where then like the side kicks out, but on the roof, or is that just an awning? I think it's just like an awning. awning. I don't know. Yeah. It's an awning because then that's a, a full vertical, like six foot door almost. Chris, how many different companies with trailers did you guys have? Uh, we probably had 
16 or 18 <laughs> oh my god trailer companies oh yeah uh, holy shit <laughs> it was yeah it was like more expo off-grid trailer expo uh, <laughs> but it's just like rooftop tent and camper trailers and that's it right there it was a ton of that stuff i mean the the other stuff followed suit but that's the guys mm-hmm. that want to get their get their cool stuff in front of people and the stuff that i wanted in was trailers they're so cool mm-hmm. uh, yeah so this is the yeah, we had, we had Turtleback, we had Rustic Mountain Overland. I'm going to get in trouble if I start naming people because I won't. Because <laughs> you'll forget someone. And, yeah, I, I will. And I can't name anyone off the top of my head. But, uh, yeah, we had a bunch. And actually, I think all of the trailer manufacturers that we had last year are coming back this year. Mm-hmm. Was uh, T- T.O. Extreme there? T.O. Extreme out of Salina? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. A, one, of, one of the buddies that I have been on, I guess a couple trips with, he, I think he has done some engineering for them in the past. So he runs really? one of their trailers and he has uh, the Orlando Discovery and his, on his trailer, he has the rooftop tent extended up. Yeah. So he can actually see clearly out the back of the Discovery and then the tent, but it's still like shorter than um, the actual Disco. Yes. Thank you. Nice. This goes not a short vehicle. No, I'm a I'm a new proud owner of one. I did, really? Yeah, I oh bought a, I bought What'd a '96. About I know I'm in trouble. I bought an old '96 at a project rig about three weeks ago. Mm, <laughs> V8. Love it. It's so cool. Yep. It's, you get a stick, or is it? It's the auto. It's automatic. It's a '96. Um, get the 4.0 in it. Mm-hmm. It's the SE7, so it's got the rear yep. air conditioning. If I can ever get that working, and Art- <laughs> Artemis runs discos too, don't they? Yep, and uh, and then his good buddies down there in Springfield is Re Rover, um, who's also one of the more expo sponsors. I actually got to spend last weekend wheeling with those guys with their discoveries, um, mm-hmm. but they they restore defenders and discoveries and the old classics and stuff like that, and cool. man, they're just so cool. Not, they are. not those guys. They're not that cool. The, the vehicles. The yeah. Vehicles. No, those guys are great too. Yep. So. And it's kind of a neat community. We we probably had at the event that Artemis did last weekend. We probably had ten uh, classic Land Rovers wow. right there. Oh wow! It was really neat. Yeah. That's all of the running ones in the state, right? It's, Sorry, that's a throw. It's a throwaway joke. I had to make it. There were a couple from out of state. <laughs> well, <not> fair. <laughs> I actually saw my first new Defender over the weekend. Really? Yeah. It was street parked. Um, in like the standard height mode, it, it looked like uh, just if you had modernized a like an LR4, yeah. you know, brought it up a couple of years. Um, and then the next time I saw it, given wasn't completely – sober in my uh, wanderings <laughs> around the island I was on, but uh, it was in the off-road mode, you know, with like at its maximum height setting and yeah. just street parked along with like, like everything else. It, it was, it looked pretty badass. Uh, I, I didn't want to like it and I don't think it's a perfect replacement for the old Defender in any yeah. capacity. But in like in a vacuum, just kind of wandering around and seeing this thing, it was pretty fucking cool. That's that's exactly the way to the way that most people look at them. It's like, well, of course, it's not going to be a, a replacement for the Defender. If you built one mm-hmm. of those, it would be a a rock sore, you know, <laughs> like a, yeah, or uh, like a stripper Wrangler. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I mean, you got to appeal to their clientele which is amazing comfort and even though these things are pretty base model mm-hmm. not super luxurious they're still way nicer than most of the crap that we're driving nowadays I, I was, yeah i'm good with the, the new one like i knew they had to modernize it make it look a little different i i don't understand the angry eye kind of copycat look that it has uh, 
I feel like Jeeps have cornered the market on angry eyed Jeeps. Uh, Jeep the brand hasn't. Jeep the aftermarket existence has. Correct. Well, a lot of Jeep owners, I feel like, have cornered the market on angry eyed Jeeps. But like the well, new Defender has like, it's maybe not, I wouldn't call it angry eye, but just like wary. Yeah, it's got a uh, an unnecessarily aggressive face. <laughs> Concerned Defender. You know? You know how everybody, like the the saying is like people see faces in the front ends of vehicles. That's why every, like that's why Acura's headlights don't work so well for a lot of people because they're Cause there's strips because no <laughs> there's no face and the, the defender's face really looks like um, we were joking. I forget who we were joking with, but it's like, you know, in toy story when Mr. Potato head puts on Mr. Angry eyes, it's like that. that. <laughs> that's what it is. That's funny. Yeah. Definitely looks so, like that. So what got you into a disco? Because that is, I mean, good choice. I I completely approve, but not yeah. the least problem free. No. Uh I do all I do all my own mechanic and worker as much as I can anyways. I've only had I've only had to pay somebody to work on my Jeep once since I've owned it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's Really, only because I just didn't have time and I needed to get the vehicle running, so I'm gonna get back to work. Um, but it's it's getting some miles on it. The Jeep is, and I was like, you know what? I'm I'm kind of ready to just park this thing and maybe it'd be my Friday vehicle or something. Mm -hmm. Just drive it a little bit less because I'm putting 40 or 50 miles a day on it. That's pretty uh, good for something that's built like that. Yeah, it's it's uh, significant for sure. So. Um, so we sold or we were going to sell my wife's escape and buy her a grand Cherokee. So we got her the grand Cherokee and then we held on to the escape and her idea was, well, you can just drive the escape as your daily driver. <laughs> and I was like, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> so, well, it's two wheel drive. It's I've always had a, a unique vehicle. Oh, like, mm -hmm. Ever since my first vehicle, it's always been something a little bit unique. And what was the first one? Uh, 1967 Ford Galaxy. Oh, okay. wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my that... dad spent two years building it. I turned 14 and traded my dirt bike for it and then spent two years working on it. Turned 16, got my license. I was driving to school all week. And then that Friday, somebody ran a stop sign and T-boned me. And oh, that's fucking devastating. Oh yeah, my God. Really bad. <laughs> so uh, you, you were okay. Presumably. Yeah. yeah. Everybody was fine. Uh, a little shaken up, but everybody was all right. Like yeah. oh. I folded the car in half. Um, so that was done. Actually, I kept it and parted it out. So I mean, that was a mm. project. Uh, and then I had another galaxy after that. And then had a Jeep and big Ford truck and then, mm -hmm. Uh, now I've got um, fast forward 15 cars. Now today I've got the Wrangler, the Discovery, uh, 71 F100, and nice. a 66 Thunderbird sitting in the garage. It's a good fleet. So is... They're all broken. <laughs> Always. Bump side? Uh, yeah, so Ford would have called it not a uh, – the bump side would have been the straight bed. Mm. Um, so Ford – let's see, Chevy called it the – Step side, Ford would have called it the flare Fair side. side. Flare side, yeah. But that, that era is the trim comes out. So I think they called it a bump side on the trim that goes all the way down. Where 73 to 79, it actually cuts in and that makes it the dent side. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> the go. weird, the weird. So I, I worked at LMC truck for about four years. And so I got really, do it. really familiar with all these weird, just, phrases that happen with mm -hmm. yeah i've got one i don't even really know the proper nomenclature <laughs> <laughs> there's ins and outs for everything on that and somebody's always bound to correct you so you bet you, you short bed or long bed it's short bed nice yeah yeah it's a fun little toy that that truck was actually my my wife's father's first truck that he ever had he drove it in high school Mm -hmm. um, before that it was a, 
a construction fleet truck when they built the Truman Dam. And Chris, you'll know okay. where that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so when they built the Truman Dam, it was a construction truck. And then my wife's father got it and uh, fixed it up a little bit. And he's had it ever since he turned 16 and got his license. And like, I think that was 78 or 79. And then, uh, and then he handed Megan and I the keys when we got married. That's, that's a gift. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. Um, so it, it pretty well had a blown engine and a, a burn-up transmission when I got it. So I mm. immediately put it under the knife, and we put a hot 302 in it, and nice. pulled the uh, pulled the C4 out and put a C6 in it. Mm -hmm. and it's a fun little tire barker. You got all your bases covered. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think we've introduced what more is yet. We oh, yeah. That. That's, that's important. <laughs> oh, but so Mid Midwest, off, no, Overland and Off-Road Expo. Yep. Or did I yep. get it backwards? That's the more Expo. Midwest, Overland, Off-Road Expo. That's it. More. I have to think about which word has more R's in it for overland versus off-road. Yeah. <laughs> off yeah. The road normally gets capitalized. That makes yep. more sense. For... Or, yeah, hyphenated. Um, so the more Expo is um, currently, and hopefully we stay that way, we are the largest uh, consumer show in the Midwest for anything and everything to do with overlanding. Um, we... We represent, well, the 2020 Expo, we represented uh, 52 exhibitors. Wow. Uh, Showing. From all over the United States. We, mm -hmm. had, we had people from uh, East Coast of Virginia all the way to um, Seattle and Oregon and everywhere mm -hmm. coming in. We, we actually brought attendees in. I've got the map. The pin board from <laughs> over 26 states that we brought in, um, that we that we were able to document. So mm -hmm. that that's cool. Uh, this year for 2021, we expect to have approximately 100 exhibitors there. Um, that's a show, man. It's big. Uh, it's 80,000 square foot of indoor space. Uh, Holy shit! Yeah. So we do it in February. It's cold. Well, mm -hmm. it sucks. Uh, of course, it's Missouri. You never know. It could end up being beautiful. But, <laughs> it could be uh, sunny in 65, I, too. So. <laughs> I know. The idea is that it's cold. Everything sucks. There's nothing to do. But we're just coming into the new season, you know, planning our trips. Everybody's looking at their calendars. Everybody's going through their gear, checking it out. It's just perfect timing for uh, being able to get out. Have your first show of the year go check out some stuff we did we did classes and courses or classes seminars um and i think we had 16 seminars that went on uh, <laughs> for the expo in 2020 who spoke with doubling everything we're also doubling the the course uh schedule so we expect to have about 30 seminars available wow. Wow. and they're all all free to attend everything Everything's included in the price of a ticket. So. Mm -hmm. Who spoke at the last one, out of curiosity? Uh, well, we had 16 of them. So we had everything from um, first aid survival kit. Uh, it's cool. all, all of our, all of our seminar stuff is sponsored by Switchback Outdoor Safety. Uh, yeah. That was. And because they're local know, too, aren't they? Yeah, they're local. Aaron Paris is. That's super yep. good. Yeah, and. Um, He's he's a brilliant instructor. He, he's just a good teacher. Um, he's actually a, a safety uh, director in his full time wow. job. His non overlanding job. Uh, <laughs> yeah. His so, actual profession. We all have those. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so we had we had him in doing three or four uh, different courses preparedness. Um, how to pack your vehicle just for daily driving. Mm -hmm. You know if you're going to end up out you know even in the city if you break down you're going to want to have these couple things with you um just to keep you safe and we had let's see we had topographic map reading 
Oh, um, awesome. Yeah, that was cool. We had some speakers come in. Uh, go to the top of the one. Seriously, that sounds awesome. Right? One guy summited Kilimanjaro, uh, so he came in and talked about it. Uh, if any of you guys are out biking at all, mm -hmm. one guy that um, that does the uh, the Great Divide is that right? Mountain bike trail. It's it's down the, down the Rocky Mountain range from Canada, pretty much mm -hmm. to Mexico, I believe. I think it's like A bike. Holy shit. Yeah, that's what I said. And he, when I was talking to him, he said, you know, the craziest thing about it is I ride my bike from the starting line, and he lives in Wichita. Mm -hmm. so, is where? What, what possesses you to do that? I just, a, incredible fitness. <laughs> I have fair. So, something I have no knowledge yeah. of. Uh, so to back up, what got this whole thing started? What kind of kicked it into your brain and into the reality? Well, um, <clears throat> to be completely honest with you, it's, it's the idea of trying to get away from uh, the nine to five job and how can, Fair. How can I branch into uh, overlanding full time uh, mm -hmm. is kind of what, what stirred the idea. Um, I've done some, some charity events, some raffle or off-road events, like more towards rock crawling and stuff like that with the Jeep community mm -hmm. and every event that I ever uh, partook in or directed or anything like that really turned out very well. Mm -hmm. um, I just, it seems like I, I just had a knack for the marketing and advertising and I, I really enjoy it. So it's fun for me. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So I, I've got a friend that does RV and boat shows and he's been doing that for the past 30 years. And I've, I've helped him throughout the years, uh, just kind of, you know, managing some of the stuff, running the door, whatever I was doing for him, running around collecting checks or whatever it was. <laughs> but I was around it. And, um, and he said, you know, hey, he went to my last fundraiser that we did. He said, why don't you think about doing this um, on a larger scale and, and kind of, thinking about doing it full time. He said, I, I think you'd be really good at it. And I, I think there's a market for, for your industry. And I mm -hmm. kind of started just running some demographics and some, some numbers local to the area. And it was like, you know, the light bulb went off and I was like, you know what, I think I can make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, I went and, and grabbed a little business loan and started advertising. Um, and the day of the show, Buddy, I didn't know if there were going to be five people or 500 people <laughs> show up. <laughs> and then, and then 3,500 people came in the door. Holy shit. So, that, uh, that exceeded expectations a bit. It, it exceeded our expectations. Um, we had a fantastic turnout and everything went so well that it allowed us to jump right from, you know, what we could afford the first time you know, we, we paid our loan off and instead of renting 34,000 square feet, we rented 80,000 square feet. So Man, you guys it, did well. It did. It did really good. And we're, we're super excited about the 2021 show. Hopefully you guys come down and check it out. Chris, I know you're close enough to <laughs> Love to. Well, we, we, we have, commiserated uh, on an earlier, earlier episode. I had to go to Florida for a wedding during the last weekend? year's show. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was crushed. I was like, wait, this Overland Expo West is so far and East is so far. Like this is right here. And I had to go to Florida instead. So. so that's, that's the other thing about it being here and local to the area in Springfield is East and West are fantastic shows. I mean, they're, those guys are pros, mm -hmm. um, but we needed something here in the Midwest. Now we've got rendezvous in the Ozarks and I, I always make sure that they get credit where credit's due because that is a tremendous event. It's in October. Uh, I think it's the third week in October this year, and we're definitely going to be there. But they've always got a great vendor turnout. I think they had a, a thousand rigs down there last time. Sounds uh, about right. That's a huge big. number. And it's just it's growing quickly. Uh, Randy Putt is the guy that puts that on and his team. Uh, who deserve a lot of credit too, but 
man, that's that's an awesome event. So we're not the only one in the Midwest. We're the only all indoor, and it's mm. ours is ninety percent strictly consumer show. Uh, we've got some some outdoor, uh, some satellite events that happen that weekend too, just to make sure it's not just a, you know, just a selling show. Right. Uh, you guys, are you guys familiar with Southern Missouri Off-Road Ranch? Or, I know? am. Chris, yeah, you would. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you're local because I can tell <laughs> I have a, so I, I have a cousin. He's got a JKU. He's in Springfield. He's been there. <laughs> I have not taken the time. I have a 94 Land Cruiser that I'm actually trying to sell. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh. I'm trying to, trying to move on from it. But uh, I, I, we purchased it, so I have four kids. And so as much as the Land Cruiser is great for getting out there, I need something a little more um, modern comfort for uh, in latch systems. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I'd love to get the either one of those vehicles. I bought an 08 Sequoia. I need to get down there for that too. So the obstacles look familiar. I'm just looking at pictures and, and I recognize the obstacles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, they're huge. The guys from light bright were just there. So they did a video uh, down there. It, it attract, it's, it's one of the best off road parks probably in the United States. Um, so they're only 50 minutes by highway from the Moore expo. So they're actually our camp host sponsor. We were going to do camping at the expo, but the the grounds for camping there are terrible. It feels like you're camping in the city. It's all hard ground. It's super expensive. If anybody mm. wants to camp there, I think it's like 30 bucks a night. Facilities are all shut off because it's February. So, so the ship freezes. So we, we said, nope, nobody's camping at the fairgrounds. We wouldn't want to even invite anybody to do that. Uh, so we we made contact with Brandon at Spore, and he's got almost a thousand acres of beautiful mm -hmm. land down there, just at the very top of the Ozark Mountains. Um, so we have that going on, and that off road park's awesome. So you can go down there, camp, off road, come in, check the expo out, go back, camp, anything you want to do there, and then something to tie it tie the two together we thought was cool uh since they're 50 minutes away by highway that's that doesn't really sound that romantic right like drive drive an hour and go camp. <laughs> yeah no so i was like all right what we need to do because we've got a bunch of national forest in between us it's like let's find a route that goes from springfield to seymour uh where s'mores mm -hmm. at so we went out several times and finally uh, put a route down on paper uh, that we liked, that was fun. Nice. Anybody could take it, you know, mostly just beautiful scenery, gravel mm -hmm. road goes down through Mark Twain National Forest, down through Garrison, Missouri, and then back up through the Chadwick area, uh, ATV riding area. And, uh, and now, now you're talking Ross's language. Yep, that's that's me. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so that that turned out great, and a lot of people just kind of went down there and camped, took the route halfway. But we had we had 150 rigs. Uh, ah, so many. Wow. On that convoy. So <laughs> the first convoy I think had 60 rigs on it. Jesus, that's a group, man! Holy shit. This is an awesome convoy. I, That's crazy. I went out when they were all rolling in, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go stand out there for five minutes and watch these guys come in because it's just going to be so cool. And five minutes went by, ten minutes went by. and like, it they kept just, going. Yeah, it's still going. It was awesome. The parking lot just filled up with these muddy, wicked, cool-looking rigs. <laughs> jumping out, running to the bathroom because there was nowhere to pee along the route. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, so was, it, that was, awesome. was it like three hours for 15 minutes kind of thing? Yep. It's three hours is what it took. Uh, we ran it. The first time that we ran it, it took three. Uh, second time it was like two and a half and then third mm -hmm. time down to two. So we, we just put it out there as a three hour ride. Yeah. You had that many vehicles and there's no way it's taken the shortest amount of time that you've done it solo in. Yeah. 
the uh, the guys that were sponsoring an Express Rally actually are used to running convoys that much, that large. Mm -hmm. uh, they do the adventure series, and they'll usually have 40 or 50 vehicles in, in one of their convoys. So they know how to how to pull up, block traffic. They'll keep the whole group together. Mm -hmm. Was you? Was that? I think, we, I think we lost Ross. No, I'm still here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. I don't know. There's weird noises coming out, and I can't tell if it's my headphones or my apartment. So it might be your apartment. Apologies. Um, <laughs> so you have set a date for the next show, right? Yeah, February 13th and 14th, Valentine's Day. Okay. Valentine's Day weekend. Chris, you had a wedding that weekend last year. Who gets married on Valentine's Day? Uh, my wife's friend from high school. So yeah, that's all right. I, no, it's romantic. I, I don't really want to complain too much because they got they got married at the Botanical Garden in Sarasota, Florida, and it was yeah. for February after being in Midwest February yeah. to go spend like three four days in Florida February yeah. was really nice. I'm sure it was. You said you got off the plane and you were like. Oh, like a wave like yeah. oh my god humidity hits you like also don't really know the next time anybody's going to be welcome in florida so keep that in mind yep <laughs> yeah i'm good uh, Anyways, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so yeah february 13th and 14th uh, cool. we always will always probably land on that valentine's weekend so it's uh fortunately springfield's a, a romantic city to come down and check out and there's neat little hotels and Restaurants are all. Springfield's an awesome food city. It's got mm. some character to it that nobody knows about because the, the food part might be the thing that draws my wife in. So yeah, it's a it's a foodie town. Yeah, that's that's some of the best <laughs> salt. <laughs> so there's you know it's also home of Bass Pro Shop. So get down there and check out Bass Pro. We did uh, the uh, we did one of the oh god. I'm going to mess it up. We did Wonders of Wildlife in the aquarium. Yeah. As like a weekend staycation kind of thing. Like spent one night in a Hilton Garden Inn kind of thing and mm -hmm. yeah. just relaxed. And the coolest thing about that is, I don't know what you said coolest. That an interesting thing <laughs> that they have, and I'm, I might mess it up. It's either Teddy, it's got to be Teddy Roosevelt's like collection of yeah. taxidermy that used to be in the Bronx Zoo, but is now here in Springfield. Uh, and just the way they style the room, like it's it's a really cool room. I don't, because taxidermy and Bass Pro go together, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I, I actually went and checked it out last Sunday. Um, it was a blast to walk through. I think normally if you stopped and really looked at everything, you'd probably spend a, a few hours in there. I think I buzzed it in 45 minutes. I was in and out. Yeah. We we had kids with us, so we were slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you stayed the night there. Yeah. They uh, I guess they camped out. They do that for some for some groups, uh, child groups, like stay the night there. So. Oh really? My sister and I were laughing about it. Like, you know, does does all the animals that are alive do they turn into statues? Because it's, <laughs> it's like the opposite. Style. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's like it's like sleeping under the well in the uh, Museum of Natural History. Yeah. Ross, what do you call that throwaway joke, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good joke, though. I'll give oh, yeah. you that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, good times down there in Springfield. Um, you know, if anybody that's listening wants to check it out and and learn more about more, uh, the website is www.moreexpo.com. Uh, M O O R E E X P O. So jump on there, check it out. We we update it daily, um, and then keep an eye on Facebook page. If if you hit the like button, or as as a lot of the the millennials will say, smash that smash that like button. <laughs> when they do Subscribe the and like. <laughs> I always feel silly saying it, but you actually have to do it. <laughs> yeah, um, helps the community. So, like and follow, uh, you know, that's where you keep up with anything that we're updating on. If there's going to be any, uh, you know, any any safety precautions or anything like that that we're taking, that's where we're going to find that stuff on the website or on Facebook. Uh, and mm -hmm. obviously, we're going to take all the, uh, all the precautions necessary to 
to keep everybody safe and and still keep the show rolling. So, at least, at least with eighty thousand square feet, there'll be more, a little more space to more real estate. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll we'll spread out a little bit. Um, definitely, definitely plenty of room down there. Come down and and see the Artemis shop. Aaron's got ten thousand square feet of that eighty. Uh, okay. So his. His boot space is a 10,000 square foot boot space. Wow. That's insane. So then which of, which of your own trucks are you going to bring to the show? <laughs> I don't know. Which, whichever one's running, I guess. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> um, That's the right answer. <laughs> the Jeep. So is the Jeep. So has been the, uh, the steel driver off road or more expo kind of icon vehicle. So, hmm. you know, that'll be, That'll be sitting down there, and then maybe I'll get the discovery to sit down there. But it, it's not about me and my rigs; it's about right. what somebody else's bring in. And, and if, you, if you want a stock Sequoia to show up, I can. <laughs> yeah, so, of course. Just out of curiosity, and because the overland community is, and well, not overland, but the off-road community is so Jeep-driven at least on the surface for people who don't really know that much about it. What percentage of the show uh, would you say is actually geared towards Jeep or, you know, Jeep owners? I would say, uh, well, are you, are you asking as far as attendees go or as far as exhibitors go? I guess that's two separate questions. (laughs) So, uh, and I can answer them both for you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm genuinely curious because, you know, up here, I'd say the off-road community is pretty much 50% Jeep and then 50% everything else. Yeah. You know. Uh, I think the statistics that we saw coming in, uh, as far as from an attendance standpoint, were probably uh, 50% Toyota. Wow. I would say 30% Jeep and then the remainder would have been just kind of miscellaneous. Yeah, Mitsubishi, Land Rover, Nissan. Yeah, some, you know, some Frontiers and and a lot of Land Rovers coming in. Um, A lot of really cool uh, vans. So we saw a ton of, ton of the van life Hmm. represented out there. Um, now you're speaking my language. Like you joint guys? You joint guys? Like uh, you join off road? You join off road? Uh, no. Oh, Carolina. not not a weed reference. The brand yeah, you, no, no, no. you join. You jo- <laughs> I, was thinking, well, I was thinking mechanical anyway. <laughs> Is that the big white Ford van? The you join uh, off- yeah. He does, the, he does a Kona lines a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The lifted ones. Yeah. Okay. I should. Uh, I guess I should say Easter. Sprinters that we saw coming in. Okay. Hmm. Um, and then as far as from a vendor standpoint, so I've got, um, I've got an exhibitor that's doing, uh, Jeep J. Or I'm sorry, he does XJ. Um, okay. It's uh, let's see. So he's doing like the XJs, the MJs, the old Jeep Comanche trucks, a bunch cool. of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've got uh, like five, eight, nine fabrication in there, and they're doing. Um, oh yeah. They're doing the Colorados and the Rangers, uh, some Toyota stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, we let's see. Now I got to get my list out. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so then just to tangent off of this what impressed and surprised you most at this year's show impressed and surprised me the most was uh the audience of people that came in um it was it was so busy for me but so much fun because i like kind of bouncing around and talking Mm -hmm. I like to have half conversations with people and then just be like, it, it's fun to just bounce around. So I didn't have a chance to eat, drink a bottle of water, sit down, <laughs> anything during this whole expo because the whole time I was walking around, you know, I'm, I'm just constantly getting 
getting grabbed. Hey, you know, people asking questions, but you know, this is awesome. We're having so much fun here. Um, everybody's positive attitude was great. Really the show went off without a hitch. We didn't have any major <laughs> issues. But That's awesome. There were a couple little hiccups that maybe even nobody noticed, but I, I mean, obviously I did and nobody said anything about it. So I was like, all right, well, they're just letting it, letting it slide or whatever mm -hmm. it is. But we, we put a survey out afterwards and everybody was so gracious. Um, man, it was just, it was really cool. And I, I think the thing that impressed me and surprised me the most is how it affected the community in the months after. Okay. Um, just that Springfield, Missouri area, all the way up to Kansas City, and how you know we we're not taking credit for the for the influx of <laughs> overlanding. Uh, you can give that to Expedition Overland, but um, <laughs> right. <laughs> And everybody else, but it just no, XO like gets it, a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. It there was a, a cattle prod in the area that hit, and then man, I mean, it's fun when I'm on on my way to Warsaw going down to the lake and I pass three or four rigs with rooftop tents. It's like, yes, these are my people. Like, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> pull a 180. <laughs> yeah, like I just want to hop in convoy with them. And I, I feel like there's there's almost like I, I had no four Wrangler for a long time. Like I understand the Jeep wave. Yeah. I, I feel like when I see a dude and he's still got his rooftop tent on that I, I just kind of wave at him now. Like I, yeah. I feel like that's, that's the thumbs up. Would, you just throw yeah, the like, thumbs up. It's somebody I want to know. Like they, they're, they have the similar idea to what I want to do. All. It's becoming the overland wave. Yeah, for sure. Mm. So yep. There's, a, there's an old, uh, old <clears throat> F 50 that I pass every day on the way to work and, He's got a roof rack. He's got a spare tire sitting up on the roof rack of this F-150. So automatically it just kind of looks kind of cool. And then he's got some <laughs> off-road lights and it's lifted up a little bit. But every time we pass each other, it's like, hey, brother. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see I, you driving a Jeep. I'm driving a Ford truck, but we're still bro. Like, we could have yep. a beer. So, when I have my uh, – Chris, go ahead. No, the well, the, the local guys that I run around with, like, I, I generally hit in the 80 series Land Cruiser. One of the guys has a 100 series Land Cruiser, but then there was a Bisco. Uh, there's Jeeps. There's a Colorado. Uh, one guy went from running a Forerunner to now he's running an F 150. Mm -hmm. And it just, n nobody's really, nobody really cares what you show up with. Like this, if the idea is to get outside and be just calm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So we, I mean, you don't see it like when I, when I first started building the Jeep, it was made to go tear it up at the off-road parks and do rock crawling and, and all that fun stuff. And it's like, man, it, it was a little clicky, you know, you got your mm -hmm. regular group and you got not everybody. And it wasn't even that bad. Like everybody was pretty wonderful, mm -hmm. anyway, but no, I've been in those groups before too. I understand the Wrangler group and then you got the buggy group and it might just because you know the the JKs get around so much better that we always have to stick together <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's the overlating thing's funny because you know like we had one of those uh on the s'more to more trail last year there was a um uh oh, what's the four-wheel drive car uh the Super Eagle. oh AMC Eagle yeah. oh shit really that's yeah, awesome there was what? a on that route, and it's like, man. And then there's, is there a, uh, what's the other four wheel drive car? I think it's a foreign car. A lot of Neva? A lot of, yeah. No, I don't think that's what it was. Uh, I, want, I want one of those. <laughs> yes, we do. Oh, yeah. Uh, four wheel drive foreign car. I think it's a like Panda? A, a Fiat Panda? No. Oh. I'm running out oh, of man. foreign four Yeah, this is, this is a rabbit trail here. The only one I, other one I can think is it a wagon? There's a, a Peugeot that's like a, is it a 405 Don, Donegal or something? I'm, I've gone way know. off the deep end. But anyways, it was a, uh, anyways. It, just another car and it's like, you know, this is cool. And then there's, there's full size trucks and mm -hmm. you name it. And then, you know, global expedition vehicles coming through. Right, right. It wasn't like a Suzuki SX4 or something, right? I've seen a bunch of those with like, 
you know, 28 inch <laughs> like general grabbers on them and they do okay. Really? No, yeah. it's not what it was. No. I'll have to remember what that was. I'm going to go back through the registration. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so global, global expedition vehicles is another like excuse that I want to go down and visit. Just, oh, I know no. I can't afford one, but I just want to see the shop. <laughs> yeah. I uh, need a house. <laughs> they, they've got a nice spot at the expo. They got a big, of course, they need a big space. They have to have a big space. Yeah, the trucks are they seriously. Got big, they got a big space so they can display some rigs. But it's nice because Global Expedition Vehicles is right next door to Artemis Overland Hardware. Oh, okay. And it's it's also like pretty much right next door to Re Rover, so you can go check out the the Land Rover the classics. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And then you've got Mother's Brewing right there. So oh, also awesome. Done. Yeah. So you're and just beer. that's where you want to hang out. Maybe not after dark, but that's where you want to hang out during the day. Is that part <laughs> of really? <laughs> so I, I was wrong on the Peugeot. It's a five hundred four station wagon. Five hundred four, not four. Oh, okay. Since Peugeot, Regardless. everything's numbered. They look really cool though. They do. I think French station wagon. I don't think French station wagon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, for, that's that's more for weird car Twitter. That's what that is. Yeah, right. Well, sweet man. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming on, and talking to us. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. What uh? Website. What was that? Say that again, Chris. We gotta make sure we get you down to the show. At least, at least, Chris. Uh, if I can get Ross out for there. sure. Hey, man. If things are normal by then, I'll happily fly down. Come out. We'll, we'll put you guys on a panel if you guys want to do a roundtable or something like that. Um, oh, Lord. I don't... Man, you're making us really <laughs> official here. <Yeah>. The <laughs> podcast is one thing. Nobody can really ask us questions on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got seven months to learn overlanding, and then you can just... Fair enough. I, I believe strongly in fake it until you make it. And it's, <laughs> yes, touche. <laughs> well, and I, I think our a lot of our advice always is just get out there and do it. That's <laughs> yeah, just like fucking go for it. Some yeah. and it, I'll, I would reference a lot to switch back with the safety stuff. And know how to stay safe, but then automatically get out there and do it. Yep, go do it safely. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, find a Garmin in reach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. still on the list. Yeah, cool. Fine. Sweet. So, more expo website, Facebook. Any any other places? What's your other social medias? Instagram's huge. Uh, we've got like fifty thousand followers on Instagram. So, and and that Instagram handle is for the audience. <clears throat> uh, it's more expo. <laughs> Self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very straightforward. You're yeah. like my mom when she's telling me an email address. Okay, it's capital <laughs> yeah. N, yeah. O, lowercase o. All right. Based now, on just, what I'm seeing here, everything's lowercase. Yeah, yeah, all lowercase more expo on Instagram. So make sure you guys follow us on that because we're really mm -hmm. pushing hard to kind of get that thing off the ground. Which getting it off the ground with fifty thousand followers. Yeah, man, you're you're there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting to get to 500 over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very inconsequential. This is true. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's all fun. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's as much as I want to worry about like social media numbers, like I'd rather just go outside and go camping. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. One of these days I'll just be able to hire somebody to do all this stuff and then I'll just camp. I'll live in a cave. Yeah. Just do fun shit. I guess I could probably do that anyways. If I Live in a cave? Just, yeah. Just post the cave photo. You'll get, <laughs> get a hundred thousand followers. Like, right? I am. <laughs> it's a, it also helps if you're a, a female. Yeah. Mm. I'm not. Mm. The amount of Instagram models is going nuts. Yeah, I'm not. World's gone mad. Hire <laughs> some, but yeah. Um, so website, Facebook, Instagram, come and see us. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, for the listener, you can read what Ross and I write on Hooniverse. I haven't done that in forever. 
I have reviews of the Wrangler Unlimited coming soon. And I did write, I wrote for Everyday Driver this past week about my Via Cross. So, really? Yeah. I, I saw them post a picture of a Via Cross and I was like, well, it has to be a Either Cross really? article, right? Yeah. Uh, it was on I, Instagram. I, I haven't got on social media in about 14 days, so I haven't seen it. Keep it up. You're not missing any. Yeah, no, it's been fantastic. So, uh, Ross is no, clearing not like- my brain. <laughs> So while he's ignoring you in the, this month, Ross is no, not like the one from Friends on Instagram, and I'm yep. at Overlanding Dad. <laughs> uh, and also, we haven't talked. I don't think we've talked about this before on an actual podcast. Uh, Rebel Kicks is yes. our new intro and outro music. Uh, their song is called "Way Out." It is. Yep. And it's really good. It is. And teaser: they have an album coming very soon they're very nice to let us use their music they are very nice i mean they're very good friends of ours so it helps i've I've been listening to them on spotify lately so well stay tuned (laughs) all right that's it all righty chris thank you for joining us yeah thanks for having me guys uh good luck with the uh the sale of the land cruiser oh i hope (laughs) the sale of the land cruiser is helping to fund the ac repair on the v8 forerunner and so all right. I, I kind of need that to happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. It should. I don't see why anybody would, wouldn't buy it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. No, no, maybe not with that attitude. <laughs> yeah, not with that attitude. It's based, <laughs> based, based on where I've had it posted, it has not, not gotten a lot of um, attention. Just get it out on the overlanding pages and put a big... Uh, just put a big Artemis Overland sticker on it, <laughs> and it'll Dude, go like crazy. Seriously, uh, I wish. I just want someone to take it. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. All <laughs> right. Thanks, man. Guys. Chris, That's thank fun. you. Let's keep You're in touch. Welcome. Time. <laughs> <laughs> too many Chris's on the show tonight. <laughs> Ross never thanks me. <laughs> I talk to you every week. Doesn't have to happen. Come on. That's true. <laughs>